did you know one in three people in the UK suffer from allergies right now? Yeah, we don't really like question it. It's like you you just look at that statistic and you're like, oh, yeah, one in three. But it's like one in three. That's so many people. Why is that happening? We need to be asking why. Why is hay fever getting worse? This is why we're seeing an increase in, in people with allergies mm. because of gender bias in planting trees. How crazy is that? <sighs> T, I got something to tell you. I learned something new new this week. Okay, go on. So I wanted to answer a question, right? That's mm -hmm. been plaguing me for the last, I would say, a couple of years. And it was, why is hay fever getting worse? Like, why are allergies and pollen going higher and higher and higher? That's a good one. And I'm not going gonna to be straight with everyone. The, the things I found out are going to shock you. Go on, shock me. Did you know that there's gender bias in planting trees? What? Yes, gender bias in planting trees. I literally have no idea what you're talking I know, about, I'm, but I'm excited. So there is actual gender bias in planting trees. The way that we've planted trees since like the 1960s and the way that we've developed like living in major cities, we've actually changed agriculture so significantly it's the reason why pollen is going up and i got this fact and it actually scared me a little bit mm. did you know one in three people in the uk suffer from allergies right now i actually did know that oh but literally only because i'm asked so much about allergies that it's really good to know the general stats but it's insane that's 20 one million people, I think I it is, or 20 million people. I was like, are you serious right now? That's yeah, we, bad. Yeah, we don't really, like, question it. It's like, you you just look at that statistic and you're like, oh, yeah, one in three. But it's like, one in three? That's so many people. Why is that happening? We need to be asking why. So, and this is where it comes back to the gender bias. So I started looking into this a bit more. Mm -hmm. And it was quite funny. There's articles, if you, you literally... Google gender bias, trees and pollen, you'll see loads of articles coming up. There's not much research on it, mm. which is interesting. We haven't done any research on it, but there's articles. So what I found out was um, when we started developing and building all the houses around and as populations, masses started to, to increase, we obviously wanted to keep it a bit of greenery in cities as well. But the issue is you have male, female and then both gender trees. Bi like by gender trees? Yeah, so the trees have like both sexual organs, or no, not sexual <laughs> organs. They have like both male and female pods and seeds, etc. Yeah. right? Oh, interesting. I, I didn't know that. As you know, gardening is not my forte, yeah. but that's really interesting. So the male trees produce pollen, okay. whereas the female trees produce seeds, pods and fruits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And then you've got the trees that have both... And they produce, you know, both. They both they like self pollinate basically. That's and so, really interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it, it really surprised me as well. And what they did said was that because the female trees, when they produce those pollen, sorry, they produce those seeds, fruits, and etc., when obviously it hits autumn, that falls and hits the ground. Mm. So I'm going to say builders or architects kind of went. We don't want to make everything look not pretty so they started planting more and more male trees and because male produce produce pollen and we can't physically see it so there's less mess on the ground oh yeah you're bringing me back to school where they you know you're taught about like how um like trees grow and how like fruit and stuff is pollinated because obviously I I specifically think of apple trees I remember it must have been some sort of story in a kid like when I was a kid in school where you they have like the apple tree and then the apples fall and obviously the seeds are inside the fruit so the way the system is designed is for you know the animal or the human to eat the fruit and then the seeds kind of go everywhere but obviously that's so messy I never thought about that. So yeah. So then, 
the idea being that if you increase the male population of trees, then there's less kind of, you know, fruit or nuts or whatever it be falling all over the ground. Less mess, basically. Ah. So that planting of male trees, mm. that means the pollen is just going to go up and up and up because you need that female tree to balance the pollen because mm. the pollen needs to attach to the female tree, pollinate to produce, you know, whatever whatever it's going to be, whether it's the fruit, the pollen, the seeds, whatever it is. So we started planting more male trees and that's just increased the pollen. And because it has nowhere to attach to, it just com- continues to circulate. But one of the most scariest facts was this, right? So, you know, in most major cities and like I'm looking at, you know, you Londoners in Edinburgh, Birmingham, Manchester, all those major cities, they don't plant as much trees in, in you know, you'll see a lot of more concrete jungles, yeah, we call yeah, it, right? Yeah. But even if you live in a city, you can't hide away from it because pollen can travel up to 400 miles wow. with wind. So that's why... In that, so that adds to the flavour of what's going on. This is why we're seeing an increase in, in people with allergies mm. because of gender bias in planting trees. How crazy is that? I mean, it's crazy, but it's also just so like contextually interesting. Because, you know, I think when, when we look at, um, you know, what is the cause of this increase in allergies that we're seeing? Mm -hmm. You know, we know it's multifactorial. Um, We can look at vitamin D deficiency is a big factor because obviously that's impacting our immunity. Um, The hygiene hypothesis is a really big one. People talk about how, you know, we're using, we're anti-backing everything, which is impacting our immune systems. We're not letting kids kind of rough around and play in the mud as much, which is impacting our immune systems. We talk about increased pollution, which is obviously, they say, can kind of help pollen and stuff linger in the air. And obviously it's impacting your kind of respiratory system. Mm. You know, there's all of these theories that are kind of offered clinically as to why allergies might be on the rise but I haven't heard that one with pollen but it makes it makes a lot of sense because I think yes allergies across the board are on the rise but specifically you are seeing a lot more people suffer with hay fever and I think you know there's quite a spectrum to hay fever as well you know there's the people like I was um, that like literally couldn't go outside but then there's people that can just get slightly irritated and you wonder if that is a true like pollen allergy or if it's a case that actually your respiratory system or your kind of your nose and your eyes and your mouth they're just getting irritated by increased levels of pollen in the in the atmosphere that's so interesting but you've got to think right if you're being attacked by so much pollen Mm. that your immune system probably thinks what the heck is going on we keep getting hit with this pollen so the allergies start to increase i mean it's great for the antihistamine companies because they're (laughs) they're literally smashing them out like no one's business just have little secret pollen machines like (laughs) (laughs) are you sure that's not the reason oh god let's not get to that conspiracy eh? but it is interesting and I'm going to add to what you just said a minute ago about the pollution. So as I was doing my research into why pollen levels are increasing, I I got led down, I'm not going to say a rabbit hole, but a really interesting fact of research. And it's to do with diesel exhaust particles, which are also known as DEPs. And basically, there's a scientific research paper, I'm going to link it below. What they found was that diesel exhaust particles... When it came into contact with the pollen, the diesel exhaust particles enter the pollen and it basically weakens the pollen cell wall and it allows the pollen cell wall to split. So the actual pollen particle becomes smaller. And so because it becomes smaller, as you breathe in and you kind of bring that into your chest, it started to, the particles are smaller. So it's going into your lungs and it's actually increasing the amount of pollen in your system. So it's inducing more people with, um, I was going to say, one, one allergic rhinitis and the other being asthma. That's crazy, isn't it? That makes so much sense because it's basically, because the molecule is smaller, it's penetrating the membrane either more or also potentially further into the system. Obviously, 
by the sounds of things, the research hasn't been done deeply on this, but that would make so much sense because also it isn't just hay fever, it's asthma, as you say. Mm. And again, the theories that I mentioned around like vitamin D and hygiene hypothesis, da, 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 those are the same theories that we put forward. But it just, it does seem strange that that particular area is, you know, so, you know, increased in the population. That makes sense. Yeah. See, and what was interesting, that study, they actually used just diesel exhaust particles mm. and they sprayed it into people who were you know, allergy sufferers, basically, to see what the response... <laughs> yeah. They basically just did that. They sprayed it into their nose to see what the response would be. Yeah. And the the allergies, like the mm. symptoms, they didn't increase whatsoever, but it was only when they mixed the DEPs and the mm. allergen together that they saw that in massive increase in symptoms. And they said symptoms actually went up by three times. So threefold wow. increased symptoms. And that's, it, it worries me. So we've got like gender bias happening. We've got an increase in pollution. We now know that the pollen can travel up to 400 miles. Mm. And you're, we're wondering why allergies aren't going to increase. So I'm going to sidestep a little bit here. I think that the immune system is becoming overreactive. And the reason why I say this is, if you've watched our videos on, on Instagram, and like some of the videos on YouTube, I talk a lot about the histamine receptors. And we know that the histamine 1 receptor, which is like in the skin, it controls like the blood vessels, is one of the easiest receptors to trigger. And you've got to remember, we're exposed to a lot of pollen now going onto it and it being the easiest, easiest receptor. And we know histamine overload is caused by an overactive immune system. So I think more and more people are becoming allergic to pollen because of that overreaction of the immune system and because our body's exposed to so much and there's like it's crazy like you've seen it before where people talk about vitamin c and vitamin d and it's all about increasing the immune system no they do not increase the immune system they balance the immune system you need to change that language and i know like marketeers have been doing this genius thing of adding vitamin c for colds and flus etc and saying oh vitamin d is great for this they don't increase the immune system if you increase the immune system and made it overreactive you are are going to get allergies you are going to get histamine intolerance as they call it symptoms so stop saying it's you know it's increasing immunity it's about balancing the immune system dare i say i think possibly how they've gotten away with saying increase the immune system is because if you're coming from a place of being really really deficient which a lot of people are then obviously adding some vitamin d or whatever in is going to increase the immune system in a way um, but it doesn't actually make sense because once your yes vitamin d works as part of the immune system but once your levels are sufficient then that's that there is it's not like a more is more situation in fact as you're saying more is more is more can actually wreak havoc so you're so right we need to be using the correct language because i think using incorrect language is actually a barrier in itself to people properly understanding what's going on and being able to take control of their health. So you're so mm. right in what you said. So there are things that you actually can do. So I'm not just going to scare people and just, you know, give them some information, send them on their way. One of the things that was said that you can plant more female trees in your living space and look at having female trees or female plants in your house because the pollen can attach to the female plants. And that can actually reduce the amount of like pollen that's in this circling in the environment. The second thing, and I'm sorry, I know I'm going to mention the C word, but do you remember those old famous masks in 2000 and, was it 2021, 2023? Be careful. Yeah, the old C <laughs> masks, they actually are helpful because if you put them on, it's blocking the pollen. And I know we hate them, it's summer, it's hot. But if you are someone who suffers from really, really bad like allergies and you've got asthma and you've got allergic rhinitis... I actually would encourage you to wear a mask. Look, it's shit. I know it's the last thing you want to do, but it will create a barrier and just protect you that little bit more. And I do think we need to start speaking to our local council and saying to them, listen, we're paying you so much council tax. And T, you know, we're paying them a lot of council tax and everyone's bills are arriving. But I do think that this needs to be a political you know, a, a, you need to go to your local MP and say to them, listen, we need to look at the state of allergies on the rise because this is a concern. One in three people 
Get that fact into your mind. One in three people. So we need to be looking at planting more female trees. Yes, it's going to increase more seeds and create a bit more, more like, you know, dirt or, or mess or whatever you want to call it. But for the fact of not having to sneeze and close your windows and basically rely on all this technology to reduce the pollen, I think it's really important. No, you're so right. Because, like, it makes having hay fever or being you know, sensitive to pollen in any way makes summer a totally different experience. Like it doesn't make it fun anymore. Whereas one of the most beautiful things about the summer is the long evenings, enjoying the evening sun, popping out, sitting in the park, chilling with family or friends, sitting out your back garden. Like those are really, really lovely things. But for anyone who suffers from a pollen sensitivity, all of a sudden it makes it, you know, a block of months in the year that you basically feel like you can't enjoy yourself you have to lock yourself away you're constantly sniffling and sneezing and rubbing your eyes and waking up <laughs> with a an itchy chest it's it's just not nice yeah. but i actually really like your idea of making it into a petition yeah allergies on the rise start a petition i actually think that's really important maybe we should encourage it and show people what they can do to petition their local council to basically get rid of gender bias mm. in planting trees mm. um for anyone watching we actually have done a video on our top five things that we should do for mm. allergies and hay fever this is like suggestions that we've done from a nutritionist and from you know my years of experience, and from in, experience. Yes, yeah, histamine yeah. so yeah please do watch that video if you want to you know and i think there's another clip on a few short bits on there but let us know your thoughts in the comments because did you know about gender bias in trees and i'll link the the like you know the articles that I've read because it is concerning and yes let me know your thoughts I'm really interested yeah sounds great I mean I you just threw that on me so <laughs> I'm absolutely blown away but even more so something I really like about what you said is that it's talking about the other side of you know these health ailments because I think sometimes the narrative can very much be, you know, oh, you need to be healthier or you need to do more. You need to take more supplements. You need to go on more of a diet. You need to do this type of stretch or do that. But actually, and that stuff is important, but there's also so much more going on. Like there's a lot of environmental factors as well. And no matter how much you push to optimize your immune system, to balance your immune system, to, you know, wear your mask, do all of the things that we said the fact is you know if there's literally more pollen and pollution and everything in our environment then the environment's working against you so by getting together bring your community together and let's fight this and have more of a chance of feeling great in the summer and enjoying it 100 love it Hundred percent. And uh, if your local MP's got hay fever, even better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you.